you very much for having me tonight. My name is Anna Vafi. I'm an academic. I'm based at Eshel University. I also have established and run the migration working group based in the Northwest. So all these discussions that Nadine brought forward um, are quite linked to our work. Uh, you see in your seats I've left one flyer of our group and one program of an event that we're organizing on the 22nd of February to celebrate our first anniversary, which is fully dedicated to refugees. So everyone is welcome, just join us and hopefully we'll generate more discussion on this topic. My talk today is on Brexit. This is one of the projects that I'm working on together with a colleague based at Edgefield University. Um, I am quite interested in the political engagement and civic responsibility of EU citizens. This is one of the themes that is coming up as quite strong in our project. We did quite a lot of work on this last year, and I would like to thank people in the room. Some of you have been very kind, have offered your time, have given us your trust and interviews, and we are hopefully now trying to do justice to those narratives and, and publish from the work. Uh, I'm a migration scholar. I've been doing research on migration for 14 years. So when Brexit happened, I got very interested in the topic, but more from the side of the experience of EU citizens themselves, uh, for two reasons. First, uh, in migration research, and I'll explain why I'm linking it to migration research for me, migration is just a demographic um, state of being. Moving countries is just as natural as Nadine has very rightly and Mary rightly uh, explained earlier. It's another matter that is being politicized and stigmatized in the media and public discourse. So um, that's why I link the situation of EU citizens with migration. We see in, uh, in research that uh, people who move countries uh, progressively continue to um, establish ties in the country where they, uh, they migrate to. They try to, um, to learn more about the country, they gain more rights, they create communities, they create then minorities, uh, historically speaking. The situation of EU citizens is very different. Suddenly their rights are being curtailed. So after having gained residence, after having gained um, you know, familiarity with the communities where they live, suddenly their situation changes and without any kind of warning. Another uh, parallel case is that of Windrush immigrants who are being flown to their home countries, again all of a sudden, without any clear rationale, without any kind of um, uh, humanitarian consideration of their situation. The second uh, reason why I got interested in this case is because in 14 years I have become quite acutely aware, I remain acutely aware, then that being called a migrant poses quite a lot of challenges onto an individual. Life suddenly becomes very tricky. You simply move countries, or in the case of your citizens, you don't even move countries, and suddenly your life gets very complicated. So we launched a project back in 2017 with my colleague, and we're trying to fill in a gap in the literature as well, because we've seen quite a lot of interest in academia in the UK on Brexit. Everyone is interested. They want to see how, for example, the UK uh, decided to vote to leave, what, what caused vote leave. Uh, another topic seems to be very popular is the future of the UK in the EU and the global um, arena. How will the UK positionality change? And then the media coverage of the, of, of the referendum and of the situation post-Brexit. But we don't have anything on um, the EU citizens' experiences themselves. I would like to think as an academic that this is because it takes much longer to study <coughs> ethnographically the experience of people and then to, to publish it. It's easier to read the media coverage. Uh, nonetheless, uh, I think that there is quite a lot of scope to discover what happened to the political engagement of your citizens. Not least because if we look at the early signs, at the informal uh, kind of political engagement, they are considered to be the precursor of more formal engagement. Uh, they do fall in the realm of micropolitics, but we're talking about a group of three million people. So if they get politically engaged, what will happen in the UK? How will the configuration of communities change? What happens if they want to riot? What happens if their belongingness change? So we do know from history that in countries where 
there have been this kind of betrayal because this is a strong word that comes up in the narratives of people. They do feel betrayed, and rightly so. Uh, in countries where there has been betrayal, where people feel let down by politicians, it's very hard to restore faith in politics. It's very hard to restore social cohesion again. So ruining this sense of cohesion without any clear rationale to me seems very, very, not exactly dangerous. I, I'm not trying to cause any panic. But it is quite um, a disservice to social cohesion in the UK. So what did we find in our narratives? We actually discovered that the decision of the UK to leave the EU has caused quite a lot of interest in politics. And we found this even in cases when, um, as it was actually the majority of, of cases in our sample, most people were not politically engaged before Brexit. Their lives were, I, I would say, intellectually interesting for many but not necessarily politically, um, how to say, uh, thinking. They didn't really have a political uh, stance. We noticed that there was an increased awareness of public discourse, uh, an emergence of new ideological and political attitudes, more of, of an emergence of a collective stance towards Brexit. And this was not linked to their national or ethnic identities, it was more linked to a common fate, to a common belongingness to a historical moment, for them and for the UK. So we see that there is a lot of um, talking about the sense of isolation, about the sense of frustration, bitterness, but also political literacy. I really found this very interesting, especially on the topic of the Irish border, because this is the topic that seems to have puzzled a lot the UK politicians, those who should know what's happening in this country. They didn't foresee it to be a topic before, and they are making a mess of it now. When we speak to our participants, they seem quite well informed, quite literate, and quite engaged with the topic. Uh, we found, uh, invariably, however they define themselves, as nationals or as Europeans, as diasporans, as expats, as migrants or laborers, whether they were different among each other because they had different levels of education or different family situation, all of them seem to be in search of agency and in search of really taking their fate uh, under some sort of control, even though control is a big word in the current situation. We also noticed other trends, interesting trends, that there was quite a bit of mainstreaming taking place as well. For some people, quite puzzled and feeling isolated, joining the mainstream debate that speaks about migration as something negative in this country is something soothing because they, they really feel they need to belong in the is somewhere in the post-Brexit era. Also, we found that many uh, EU citizens really employed the higher order human rights framework to actually observe and actually uh, voice their indignation uh, in terms of uh, the attitude of the UK natives to racialize and to discriminate against uh, people uh, post-Brexit and not just EU citizens. We do have an increase in hate crime, as well as um, the situation of EU citizens changing. There was a lot of disengagement as well as an act of self-preservation, because uh, it got at some point quite psychologically overwhelming for people. But nonetheless, this is attributed to a very messy political discourse and uh, mistrust towards the political elite. What are the implications? What do we think as scholars, as academics, are the implications of this situation? Well, first of all, we see that the political engagement is not just a uh, one-off, or it's not just an instant in people's lives. It's actually a continuum, and it is likely to become stronger. Mobilization of your citizens is also um, based on the observed polarization of British society, but also um, an observation that media is seeking sensationalism, so really uh, an individual and collective engagement is necessary to make sense, first of all, of the situation. But we are also um, understanding this as um, potential for, for the EU lobbies in the UK to become stronger actors in future. And this is likely to affect, this is likely to affect uh, not only their uh, relations with their um, co-EU citizens and with the UK and their countries of origin, but also the EU-UK relations in future. Thank you for your attention.